OK, next new story. And um, obviously, we're eagerly awaiting the arrival of the uh, next generation of graphics hardware, right? Um, specifically, uh, RDLA4 and RTX uh, 50 series cards. Generally speaking, we've kind of been conditioned by various leaks and rumors to believe that the 50 series is going to be coming first quarter of next year, possibly as early as January. CES continually keeps being talked about. Uh, we actually now have some leaks about the um, about the hardware from renowned leaker Copite 7 Kiwi, who uh, seems to have some sort of insider track, which um, continually generally proves to be correct. RTX 5090 and 5080 are now being discussed by the leaker. Um, 5090, apart from the fact that it's apparently going to have a much higher power consumption or rather a power limit, about 600 watts is being discussed. Uh, we don't know too much about that. However, we do have some level of a performance expectation from the RTX 5080, and it's believed to be, allegedly, 10% faster than the RTX 4090, um, which is potentially quite exciting because, well, I mean, hmm, we'll talk about performance expectations on the 5090 shortly. I'm curious what uh, the panel makes of this. Uh, Oliver, I'm going to come to you first. A 5080, 10% faster than a 4090. Sounds exciting in theory, but it ultimately comes down to how much it's going to cost, right? Comes down to how much it's going to cost and it comes down to how much your power bill is going to cost, I suppose, because, uh, yeah, if it is a 400 watt GPU, that's not much less than a 4090 at 450 watts notionally. Although I guess it will, I mean, I think we should couch that with the fact that actual in-game performance on the fifth, on the 4090, um, was generally significantly lower than the, the TGP. Uh, yes. Which, yeah. Which is great. Like might be the same here. We just don't know. In a lot of games, it's like 300 ish watts. If you if you yeah. run it pretty light, it'll run it like 200 watts, and the and the cooler won't even turn on. It's pretty funny because uh, it's got a massive. Cool I think the cooler is spec for 600 watt operation, I believe, on the on the 4090 series. So well, that's that's convenient, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose so. I'll just move over those designs. I guess Nvidia is being quite kind to their board partners there. But uh, yeah, I think the bump in performance for the 5080 over the 4090 pretty welcome, pretty cool. Not as big as the bump from the 3090 to the 4080, I believe, but RTX 5000 series will be on four nanometers, which is not really a process node. I mean, it is sort of a process node bump. It's not nearly as much of a process node bump from 3000 series to 4000 series, where you went from like Samsung eight nanometers to TSMC five, I believe, which was a gigantic yeah. jump. I mean, that's like almost two whole nodes by my estimation in terms of the yeah. actual performance <laughs> level of the chips. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of, I was reflecting on the power consumption figures here and I don't know. I don't think the power consumption figures are that wild. Like they are very high, but there were rumors the 4090 could consume 600 Watts, right? And the coolers were spec for 600 Watts. They arrived at 450 Watts. These kinds of uh, kinds of details can sometimes be tweaked fairly close to launch. And even if, I mean, if, if, even, if it, it, even if it is 600 watts, I, I don't know. It, to me, it's not that crazy. I mean, most power supplies that will work with the 4090 will continue to work with the 5090, or at least that's what I'm hoping <laughs> if I do end up upgrading. But yeah, and I think you do have that factor as well, like you mentioned, Rich, the fact that most games are not going to push a card like the 4090 to 450 watts. They'll push it to 300 watts, 350 watts. You might get higher than that in some titles, but for the most part, these chips are not running at their maximum power consumption in most kinds of gaming workloads. So I don't know. I think it's, for the most part, this news is pretty interesting, pretty positive. I would be very interested to see what the performance figures look like on that 5090, but I'd be more interested to see what kinds of features might come with this new series. Um, especially features like not just like SCR or opacity micromaps or things like this, but features that really make a big difference for gamers that are kind of like these DLSS style features um, that they can really notice in an immediate sense, not just in a, in, a, in the sense that it's improving performance, generally speaking. Like obviously you have DLSS frame generation, uh, and then obviously yeah. you have the various RTX features. You have DLSS2, you have all, this, all these innovations. I'd be curious to see what they're going to bring to the table with the 5000 series. And if that is compelling, I think that's like much more of a game changer, possibly, than any marginal increase in performance here or there relative to the 4000 series. Yeah, 
I, I think that's a, a pretty good take, actually. I do expect that we're probably going to see some sort of double frame generation mm -hmm. feature. It just kind of seems like a logical progression to me. Um, yeah, beyond that, well, <laughs> I think it's really down to NVIDIA to continue to strive on the innovation side with the with the software package, because I think at this point, DLSS is proven to be possibly the most game-changing technology that's been added to the graphics market for, for quite some time. I think the impact of it has been um, probably in excess of uh, the impact of raid facing overall for more players. And um, yeah, they've got to continue to, to keep on doing uh, those levels of innovation because, you know, the competition is inevitably going to catch up at some point. I'd like to see Ray Reconstruction revamped. I think Alex talked about that in the Outlaws coverage that we did. It's It was a great first effort, but we haven't seen a particularly great improvement there. Um, I just really want to see conceptually what they're going to come up with next, though. You know, what is the next big DLSS thing? You know, is it even DLSS? Is there something else on the horizon? Um, I, we just don't know. Can't wait to find out. Um, John, do these mm. performance expectations excite you in any way? What's your? <laughs> I mean, it all depends on pricing. I think, right? Yeah, I think but that's I, the bottom line. I do feel like there is a the four thousand series has become very well respected, but it is expensive. I feel like if they can somehow get the price down at all, if they can find a way to make this more feasible. Like make the forty eight, the fifty eighty, something that more people can kind of afford. They could potentially pull a Pascal lineup, where I feel like Pascal is kind of this like perfect storm of just just the right price to performance ratio, where a lot of people were ready to jump in. And I feel like they've been, you know, this could become like that that for the RTX series, because all of their technologies, you know, frame generation, the ray tracing stuff, all of this DLSS. It's very popular now. It's very well known, uh, but to get the best of it, it's, it just costs a lot of money, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like the forty eighty was priced pretty darn high, and there was a lot of stuff talks around that. So, if they could get something that's like forty ninety plus performance at a more reasonable, affordable price, I think you're going to make a lot of people happy, and it could become a new like the ten eighty, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, what can we say? The 40 series did actually turn out to sell incredibly well. It did, which, but... Which kind of has uh, interesting implications for um, the fact that all of the press, including us, were kind of not too happy about the pricing on several of the products there. But that said, I'm looking at the Steam hardware survey now and the products that have basically, you know, come through. <laughs> they're quite remarkable. The 4060 laptop GPU is now the number two GPU, which is Jeez. a kind of, I, I kind of expected that to be honest. I don't think that we're appreciating the impact that gaming laptops are having on the overall ecosystem at the moment, but there it is. Um, after that, the 4060 is gradually moving up the charts, the desktop uh, uh, version, I think it's one, two, three, four. It's the number six now. Um, and but beyond that, 4060 Ti has amazingly done quite well, which mm. was universally condemned, including right. by us. Yeah. But there it is. 4070 uh, beyond that is um, is the next sort of entry. I thought that was a reasonable product, but it was kind of more of a, a sort of uh, how can I describe it? Um, not quite as good generally as a as a 3080, but you know, you got more memory and it costs less and you got frame generation. That isn't exactly a hugely exciting, compelling proposition, but I think ultimately there are a lot of people that are on 20 series cards that upgraded. The only 20 series um, that's, that's in the Steam hardware survey at the top of the charts, anywhere near the top of the charts remains the 2060. So I suspect there's been a lot of um, upgrading from that generation. Pricing, I really would like to see something decent uh, for the higher end products. I just think the stack needs to be kind of ampere class price versus performance to really excite people this time around. Um, and yes, features, that's that's what I really want to see. What are they doing next? Um, but yeah, there's going to be a, a, a full stack there. I think there were some rumors that were slightly concerning that the next generation 5060 yeah. um, is... 5060, yeah, that's, that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Basically, Does. the mainstream card is another eight gigabyte card, which is slightly concerning to me. 
Um, but you know, elsewhere, it's just going to be where Nvidia pitches this. I've noted in terms of it's interesting we're talking about a fifty eighty leak in terms of performance, but nothing on fifty ninety. And I think this can go two ways. If the 5080 is using the same processor as the 5090, we're going to get an Ampere situation where yeah. you could buy an RTX 3080 and then there were diminishing returns in terms of price versus performance on anything better. You went for the 3090 for the extra memory. The 3080 Ti, I thought it was a bust, basically. 10% um, faster than 3080 for the extra money wasn't really worth it. If it is separate chips, then we're going to have another scenario with 4090 where it sits on its own. The 5090 will sit on its own in performance terms. And NVIDIA will probably, you know, charge whatever they feel they can for it because it will be the Halo product. Yeah. Nobody ever really had any issues with 4090 pricing. Uh, it was basically uh, the 80 series and below. So, yeah, from my perspective, 80 series pricing, crucially important features even more important and um we'll go from there any any final words uh oliver if that pop and gpu is spanning 600 at least 400 watts to 600 watts oh boy that's either a very that's maybe a very cut down 80 series uh, gpu at very low power targets or i don't know what that would be that would also be an interesting uh interesting thing if they did a more of an ampere style approach but Otherwise, it will be basically the 5090 standing alone at that at that top end if it does have the larger chip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing to bear in mind, the memory situation. Um, we're seeing increasingly now that ray tracing does have a specifically impactful level um, on VRAM. needs to be sorted out there. It does concern me that, you know, a lot of these products that we're seeing at the top end there are just not offering enough memory um to accommodate AAA games uh and and you know you want to be able to exercise the higher end features um on those lower end cards just to you know proportionately lower frame rates or fidelity but you know the fact that you've got bvh structures requiring a lot of memory means that that does become slightly problematic